Greetings, members, one and all of the Salvation Nation. Has Russia officially gone to a gold standard? Let's explore! You may have heard rumblings and articles out there talking about this. I kind of did a little research myself as to whether or not Russia is on a gold standard or has moved there because of recent events. I did a video not too long ago that about how Russia may be forced to move to a gold standard. And it does appear that they are heading in that direction, according to some reports. I'm going to take a look at that, but as you know, gold is prominent in Russia. They've accumulated a lot. In fact, there's an article uh, that um, I had covered quite some time ago that talked about this. At the time of the posting of this article that published the gold reserves in Russia, we could see it there. Um, it was about 2018. They said that they had they were the sixth uh, largest gold reserve in the world. Now they're up to being the fifth. And there's a lot of gold that they've got over there. And here's another image, a famous image of Vladimir Putin holding a gold bar. <clears throat> of course, one can question the the authenticity of the gold bars that are in their uh, vaults. There is it real? Or are they just gold plated tungsten? You know, there's. I, I have a feeling they are real. I do believe they are real, just as I believe that the fort that the gold held in Fort Knox is real. Is, but nonetheless, there are people that think that that is not the case. So let's reference an article here from Kitco that talks about this. And maybe this is the beginning of a <coughs> standard that is going to be in practice some time ago. Although I don't think it's official yet. But nonetheless, we'll see uh, what the definitions are or how can people tell if a nation is on a gold standard or not. We don't really have many other references, especially since no nation is, is on a gold standard now and hasn't been for quite some time. Russia Central Bank resumed its gold purchases from local banks uh, earlier this week, but it set a fixed price on the precious metal. Some people think that that alone is, uh, means that they're on a gold standard. Starting this week, the Russian Central Bank will pay a fixed price of 5,000 rubles. That's about $52 per gram. Between March 28th and June 30th, the bank said on Friday, which is below the current market value, which is around $68 per gram. The central bank added that the resumption of in buying <coughs> will ensure supply and uninterrupted production of local gold. Two weeks ago, Russia's central bank announced that it was halting its official gold purchases from local banks due to a surge in demand from its regular consumers. In fact, I covered that story as well. It's because, it's because Russians went on a gold buying spree in March to protect their savings as a ruble collapsed. Now, remember, Putin announced that the VAT was going to be um, uh, done away with, uh, and they it basically repealed the, the VAT, at least temporarily, the value-added tax. Major banks in Russia reported a rush of consumers investing in bullions and coins. Russian people are no dummies. They, are, they know that gold is the ultimate store of value, and they certainly are, are taking advantage of that right now. Spearbank, Russia's largest financial institution, reported that demand for gold and palladium had quadrupled in the last few weeks. Meanwhile, Russia's Ministry of Finance also referred to gold as the ideal alternative to the U.S. dollar. Indeed, it is. In fact, as recognized by the Bank of International Settlements in April of 2019, it certainly is on par and equal to the dollar as recognized by central banks around the world. Setting a fixed price for gold reminds some analysts of what the U.S. did during the, quote, gold standard years. The period between 1879 and 1914 is known as the classical gold standard era, and during which one ounce of gold would represent $21. Actually, that price is $20.67. Then in the 1930s, the U.S. banned gold ownership and raised the value of the dollar in gold from $20.67 to $35 an ounce. 
essentially the American people were hoodwinked after they did that. But of course, you were bound by that executive order, I think it's 6104. That rem price remained fixed until 1971 when Richard Nixon finally closed the gold window. He put a halt on the dollar, U.S. dollar's convertibility into gold, which meant that other countries could no longer redeem dollars for gold. In 1973, the gold standard was scrapped, and that was the era that the dollar was essentially saved by Henry Kissinger. He put us on what is known as the petrodollar that same year. I am reminded of what the U.S. did in the middle of the Great Depression. For the next 40 years, gold's price was pegged to the U.S. dollar at $35. There was a precedent for this. It leads me to believe that Russia's intention would be for the value of the ruble to be linked directly to the value of gold, Gainesville Coins precious metals expert Everett Millman told Kitco News. Setting a fixed price for rubles per gram of gold seems to be the intention. That's pretty important when it comes to how Russia could seek funding and manage its central bank financing outside of the U.S. dollar system. Gold is one of the most logical international currencies to use when you are trying to get around sanctions, Milman added. And we know that last week the U.S. Treasury banned all gold transactions from Russia's central bank. They're putting a squeeze there as well. U.S. persons are prohibited from engaging in any transaction, including gold-related transactions, involving the Central Bank of the Russian Federation, the National Wealth Fund of the Russian Federation, or the Ministry of Finance or the Russian Federation, uh, the Treasury said on its website. And then make no mistake, and don't get that confused with the Russian coins that you may find out there, Russian gold coins, if, as long as they're not in Russia, from a Russian company, you can still buy those. Um, uh, that is not covered by this. Those type of sanctions could be effective to an extent, said Milman. It can have a significant impact if for no other reason than to force other partners to shy away from doing transactions with Russia in gold. At the same time, knowing that the global gold market can be rather opaque, it would be much more difficult to enforce that type of restriction or regulation, he explained. Indeed, in fact, I mean, that uh, notion about the global gold market is kind of relative to the actual physical properties of gold. Very opaque, extremely dense, about almost twice as dense as silver. In response to escalating sanctions from the West for Russia's invasion of Ukraine, Moscow said that unfriendly countries would be required to pay for Russian gas in rubles or gold, according to the chair of Russia's Duma Committee on Energy. If they want to buy, let them pay, either in hard currency, and this is gold for us, or pay, as it is convenient for us. This is the national currency, Pavel uh, Zavalny said in a news conference on Tuesday or Thursday. Russia is also considering accepting Bitcoin for its oil and gas exports, and being more flexible in general regarding payment options with, quote, friendly countries. We have been proposing to China for a long time to switch to settlements and national currencies for rubles and yuan. With Turkey, it will be lira and rubles, uh, Zavalin, Zavalny said. You can also trade bitcoins. Now, so if this is, <clears throat> uh, some people may consider this to be the definition and in fact, if I'm not mistaken, I think Vladimir Putin announced this as well, that that was going to be the case, or somebody from his office of the Kremlin. Uh, so that is the exchange, and some people think that this is enough to be considered an official gold standard. But let's take a little step into it a little bit further here, from an article here from Seeking Alpha that talks about this. Russia's three-step program to put the ruble on a gold standard. Number one, offer a premium fixed price for gold to domestic Russian banks who can't sell their gold internationally due to sanctions, encouraging domestic gold flows into the Bank of Russia. Now, they've already done that. Then, step two is to strengthen the ruble internationally by insisting on energy payments in rubles, turning fixed price into a premium internationally as well, and encouraging international gold flows into Russia. They have done that or are in the process of doing that. 
And then step three, turn the ruble into a credible gold substitute at a fixed rate. And that is probably going to take some time uh, for that to uh, occur because the ruble is really hurting right now. you got to strengthen it first. It's very weak right now. The 5,000 ruble window closes June 30th. Uh, does Russia declare the ruble convertible to gold after that? At what rate? Rather than speculate on the ruble, just buy the gold. Uh, so the idea was discussed more in depth um, uh, in, there's, in this community here, but we'll get into this here. Uh, the author here believes the Bank of Russia is quickly moving to a gold standard, and here's how he thinks that they may pull it off. On March the 25th, the Bank of Russia announced that it would start buying gold from Russian banks at 5,000 rubles per gram. At current exchange rates, that's a deep discount, at least at first glance. Uh, what's the point of the Bank of Russia buying gold at a discount from its member banks? And why should its member banks sell gold at all at these rates unless they are forced to do so? You could try to say that the Bank of Russia is forcing the sales, perhaps, but I don't think it's necessary to say so. And here's this chart, but I really don't understand this chart. Oh, Euro to Brent differential. You can see it, it's crashed there, but maybe it'll tell us here. Uh, this is the price differential between Brent crude and Euro's crude. In other words, the difference between the price of oil outside of Russia and oil inside Russia. Euro, by the way, is the mountain range that divides Europe from Asia. True, the two grades of oil are not exactly the same, but the arbitrage has clearly exploded since the Ukraine invasion began. The extreme differential is obviously because the sanctions that cut off much of Russian oil market to the rest of the world. And so whatever Russian oil can get through, the firewall is offered at a major discount. But the U.S. and its allies are sanctioning Russian gold. What does that do? It creates the same sort of price differential and arbitrage opportunity. Russian gold is much cheaper than non-Russian gold now because Russian gold is cut off on the rest of the world market and there's risk of retaliation if you get caught buying it from Russia. The London Bullion Market Association has already banned Russian gold from its registries. And so if you're a Russian bank and you had some gold and you can't sell it to someone out of the country except at a steep discount, the Bank of Russia is offering to buy it from you at less of a discount. That's still a premium for you. And the Bank of Russia splits the difference, increases its gold reserves, and in that way stabilizes the ruble. And you can see the ruble dollar exchange rate since the beginning of the year. Take a look at that uh, a graph here. You can see here it goes crazy. And then here, the a Russian bank starts buying gold at 5,000 rubles per gram, I think. that should say per gram, I believe, there. Maybe it sounds. Uh, the next step of the process is to strengthen the ruble internationally. To do that, Russia has announced that it will only sell energy for rubles to unfriendly countries. In other words, countries sanctioning Russia. By doing so, demand for the ruble picks up, which would eventually turn the 5,000 ruble discount internationally into a premium, encouraging more gold flows into Russia internationally as well, and further draining the West of its gold reserves in favor of Russia. This would stop the domestic flow of gold into the Bank of Russia, but it would encourage international flows, the logical next step after domestic supplies run dry. Why can the West not see this as happening? Because they're myopic. The mainstream financial press is so focused on Russia selling gold angle because they're deeply Keynesian that they do not understand that gold is money rather than the paper that they print and that the paper only has value because it's still exchangeable for gold. Um, and... There's an article from Wall Street Journal, for example, completing the focus on Russia selling gold rather than Russia buying it, which is what they are actually doing. So that's actually a very good point here. Gold is fungible. Gold is money. And in fact, one thing of note is that the central banks actually trade it as money. It is used as a currency between these central banks. Finally, uh, they turn the ruble into a gold substitute. Russia eventually needs to sell gold at some point to get stuff it needs, but Russia can do this without actually moving any of its gold. How so? It can simply declare the ruble a hard gold substitute at a fixed exchange rate 
In other words, a gold standard. But before it does that, it first must make sure it has the required reserves if tested, which is now done by splitting the arbitrage offered by the Western powers that have sanctioned its gold and cut off from global markets. You know, oil is kind of tied into this too because they need that energy. Um, and, uh, you know, some of the oil that they have is not as good quality as you know, but gold is gold wherever it is, as long as the purity is right. Bank of Russia must also make sure its monetary policy is tight enough, now at 20% interest rates, to hold the line. Then it can insist on payment for Russian commodities in rubles, now hard gold substitutes. And by the way, Russia's monetary policy and how they've handled the ruble, uh, because it's been under threat for some time, they've had to tighten for quite a number of years because it just doesn't have the strength and weight that the dollar has around the world uh, and essentially the dollar is 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 able to do uh, these keynesian experiments because of its use around the world sooner or later that's going to catch up to us though that's a hard lesson to learn uh, the beauty of a money substitute a gold substitute in a gold standard system the currency takes the place of gold so you don't have to physically move the stuff, which is a pain and expensive. You think that's bad for gold. Why do you try to do that with silver? Western financial thought has this idea that if they cheapen Russian gold by sanctioning it, they're hurting Russia by lessening the amount of stuff they could potentially buy with that gold. In fact, they're actually helping Russia by encouraging gold inflows into the country and making it much cheaper for the Bank of Russia to amass much more gold to back the ruble at a credible rate when the time comes. When is that time? Nobody knows for sure, or if it will ever indeed come. But the 5,000 ruble to gram gold window closes June 30th. What happens then? Does the ruble become a fully backed gold substitute? Rather than speculate on the ruble itself, it's easier, safer, and more practical just to buy gold and let the Bank of Russia decide what it wants to do with its own paper. So, um, there's some interesting analysis here, and I think on the surface it makes sense. However, I think it's going to be quite a longer road to get there. Uh, because, again, in order for uh, the gold standard to work, you have to have confidence in your currency and have confidence that it's actually working. And we know there's corruption in Russia as well, but obviously it's to their best interest to have the currency be stabilized, which means they have to probably look beyond that corruption and get it to happen. In other words... In order to get on a gold standard, they have to be honest with themselves and with the Russian people and uh, in order to keep their country afloat. You've got to have the confidence of the people of your nation and, uh, and also the institutions that you're dealing with. Very interesting indeed. So I think the answer to this is the question, has Russia officially gone to a gold standard, is no, but they are well on their way. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch and to encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.